At the start of 2022, Elgato sent me the face cam, their premium 1080p webcam, which comes with a Sony CMOS sensor. It's a fantastic camera, but I've always had two issues with the face cam. The first issue is that the face cam seems to show the lights in the background of my videos to flicker from time to time. And the second issue, which is a much bigger issue, is that the face cam seems to cause my audio to go out of sync, which means that the audio doesn't sync correctly with my video. Elgato's new 4K webcam, the FaceCam Pro, looks excellent, and it may resolve many of the issues I faced with the original FaceCam, but I wanted to do things a little bit differently and use existing equipment to improve my webcam setup. So I dusted off my wife's sold Sony A6000 camera, which had been sitting in its box for many years. This camera was released way back at the start of 2014, but it can still be used as a webcam because it can record up to 1080p at 60 frames per second, and importantly, it can deliver a clean HDMI signal that does not display any menu items over the image. There's a few things you need in order to use the Sony A6000 as a webcam. The first of which is a video capture card. And you ideally want to choose a capture card that supports the camera's maximum output of 1080p at 60 frames per second. There's many solutions out there that do fit that bill, but I've opted for the Elgato HD60S Plus simply because I had that capture card available. The Sony A6000 has a micro HDMI port, so you will need to pick up a micro HDMI to HDMI cable in order to connect the camera to your video capture card. As you are using a video capture card to capture the signal from the Sony A6000, you don't have to worry about its 30 minute recording limit. And because you're not recording directly to a memory card, you also reduce overheating. Overheating and power is still something that you need to be concerned about. You ideally want continuous power. You don't want to have to rely on batteries. Sony's official solution for continuous power is the Sony AC PW20 AC adapter. This accessory will insert a dummy battery into the bottom of the camera, and then you can provide power via an AC connection. Now, unfortunately, this accessory is expensive. It retails at over £70 here in the UK. But the good news is that third-party solutions, which are generally referred to as DC couplers, they retail at between £15 and £20, and they work just as well. And that's what I'm using in my setup. The last thing you need to do is position your camera. Now, if you have a simple recording setup, this could be as easy as mounting your camera on a tripod. But if you want to position your camera above your monitor in a regular webcam position, I recommend looking for a suitable camera desk mount. There's a lot of solutions out there and they won't break the bank. In my setup, I have the Sony A6000 connected to a camera bracket, and that's connected to the stand for my Elgato key light using an articulated magic arm. If no memory card is inserted into the camera, you will see an error message when the camera loads up that says no memory card cannot play. But all you have to do is push the shutter button once in order to get a clean HDMI signal. That's all you have to do to set up the Sony A6000 as a webcam. It really is that simple. You just have to make sure that you have continuous power and that you connect the camera to your computer using a video capture card. Now this is the Elgato HD60X, it's a newer card. And as I noted earlier, I'm using an older card. I'm using the Elgato HD60S Plus. But most 1080p capture cards should do the job here. You just have to pick a capture card that supports the resolution and frame rate which you're going to be recording at. Now, if I jump over to my browser, you'll see the Sony A6000 in action. This is the Sony A6000. It's, the, you know, it's at the top right hand corner of my recording. And if I scroll down here, you can see the full image. This is exactly what the camera sees. This is everything that it's picking up. And then obviously, you know, when I'm doing my overhead shots and you know, I'm doing things with the browser, I crop the image so that you only see a certain part of it. You don't need to see all that other stuff in the background. Now, the image here could be a lot better. I need to spend time, you know, messing out with the ISO settings, changing the color settings and getting a better picture from the Sony A6000. But if I just do this and put the lights up, 
right away you can see the image quality is a lot better. Just by putting the lights up, the image quality looks so much better than it did before. So there's a lot of things that you can do here to improve, you know, in addition to the, you know, the camera settings, the image settings, you, you have to get your, your uh, lighting settings correct as well. Now, if you search online and you look for a solution and you look for articles that talk about using a Sony 6000 series as a webcam, you'll see a lot of people complaining about the fact that Sony series cameras overheat. It is something you need to be concerned about, but if you move that LCD screen away from the camera, if you've not got a memory card in to write to, and you make sure that the camera has continuous power and it's using a dummy battery, you shouldn't run into any problems. In fact, the other day, I did a video, I did a review of this audio mixer, and I spent about eight or nine hours doing the review. You know, I was doing so many audio tests. And the Sony A6000 was switched on as a webcam. I never switched it off at any point. It was on continuously for like eight or nine hours and it did not overheat at any point. It just was working the whole time. No problems, no flickering. It just worked the whole time. So as long as you've got the latest version, as long as you've got everything set up right, I don't think you're going to run into any major overheating issues. I've got a Sony A6500 here. It's using the same DC coupler and I don't have any issues with that either. So as long as you've got a dummy battery, you will get rid of most, if not all, of the overheating issues. That's been my experience anyway. So one of the big questions you might have is, well, is it better? Well, from an audio syncing point of view, the Sony A6000 is better. I would also say that the Sony A6000 is better than the Logitech Brio webcams that you had. And I would say, out of the box, I would say that it's maybe a little bit behind the Elgato face cam, which says a lot, you know, about technology, about the fact that, you know, webcams now are maybe at the level that dedicated cameras were, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago. But the thing, you know, the, the thing you've got with a mirrorless camera is that you can change the setup. I'm using the stock camera lens on it. It's just a basic 16 to 50 millimeter lens. It's not designed for low light. If I had to put a low light lens on, kind of like the one that I've got on this camera, I have no doubt that the image would look so much better. But I'm not going to do that. I don't want to go out and spend, you know, 200, 300, 400 on a lens to improve a camera that's like eight or nine years old. The whole point of me doing this and the whole point of this video, essentially, is to say, use what you have. If you've got an old camera lying around or, you know, from 10 years ago or eight years ago and it's just sitting gathering dust in a box, it could be a good solution for you as a webcam. You know, there's obviously a few things you need to pick up, the video capture card, you know, the, the dummy battery and different things, but, you know, some of these webcams coming out, you know, are, are quite expensive. The new Facecam Pro is like 300 pounds and I've not tested that webcam yet, but at 300 pounds, I'd be thinking, well, I could pick up an old camera, I could get a video capture card, I could arguably get better solution, you know, just setting it up myself. And that's what I try to do in all my kind of recording setups is that I try to use what I have first before I go looking at alternative solutions. And for me, if I can use the equipment that I have and get a good picture, it's going to save me money. And I think the next step for me would maybe to use this camera as my webcam and then I'll, you know, replace my main camera. But the whole point of this video was, you know, don't rush out and buy the Sony A6000 this isn't a video about being the ultimate webcam, the perfect webcam. It's not. It has its limitations. It's an old camera. You have to work around its limitations. It's not the best solution out there. But if you have a camera like that anyway, and it's not being used, why not use it as a webcam? Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And until next time, take care.